typically, you're going to use organizational units to apply policies to your users and devices. But there is another option that is perfect for special situations. Hi, my name is John Silwash. Welcome back to the Google Admin Bootcamp. If you have your staff and students neatly organized into organizational units, certain situations can cause lots of frustration. For example, here is Mrs. Stevens. She is doing a special class project and she needs her middle school students to have access to YouTube. Normally, middle school students can only watch YouTube videos that are assigned by the teacher. So we need to create a policy exception for her students. Mr. Lewis teaches high school algebra. His advanced algebra class needs access to the Equatio Chrome extension. But we don't want to break those students out of their normal organizational unit. And finally, this is James. Unfortunately, James has uploaded an inappropriate profile photo to his account. We need to restrict James so that he cannot edit his profile information anymore. These are all situations that would typically require us to create separate organizational units to apply these various special policies um, to accommodate these requests. But there's a new feature of the Google Admin Console that lets us use Google Groups to apply certain policies. Let's check it out. I'm going to jump into the Admin Console and we're going to fix uh, Mrs. Stevens' YouTube request first. So I'm going to go into Groups over here on the right. And we're gonna create a new group, call it whatever we want. Um, we'll just call it YouTube for Stevens. We'll give the same email address. I do think it's important to give it a nice description so that if you have other techs who are working in the admin console, they'll know the purpose of this group. YouTube access for Mrs. Stevens, middle school students. All right, we got that set up. Now, this is a newer feature of the admin console. We can designate this group as a security group. Now, there's a, a bunch of different things that happen, but the one that's most visible is it actually adds a badge on the group that says security. And that's just a designation that this group is being used for policies. I'll link to the full detailed article on exactly what security groups are. There's a few things that it does that are helpful. I'm gonna hit next. And I'm gonna make this an announcement only. No one should be communicating. I don't need anybody emailing this group. It doesn't really even need to be visible. Only invited users can join. That's all good. Hit the next button. No special membership restrictions, and I'll create that group. Now, the next thing I need to do is actually add the members of Mrs. Stevens' middle school class into this group. And I'll do that right from here. Have my users all ready to go. You can upload them depending on, you know, how many users you have. All right, and we'll add to group. Okay, so that group has been set up. Now we're going to use that group to override our typical YouTube policy. So I'm gonna um, navigate over to the YouTube service. This would be in additional Google services. And then I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the second page. And this is what you need to pay attention to. Normally, whenever you're configuring various policies, you're gonna see the list of organizational units over on uh, the left side of your screen, okay? So we've got our organizational units. Typically, that's how you would um, set these things up. But certain policies within the admin console also give you the ability to use groups, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna open up this group section, and then I'm going to search for that group that I just created, YouTube for Stevens. Now I've selected that group. So any policy changes I make are only going to be applied to this particular group. And so now I scroll down to YouTube. Typically YouTube is off for students. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. But it is only going to apply to the members of that particular group. Group settings override organizational unit settings. And this is very helpful when you have these special policy uh, distinctions. Now, there are some restrictions and limits to when you can use groups for these policy type changes. Generally speaking, you can use these access groups to enable a service. 
but you cannot use them to disable a service. So in other words, I can't use this to turn off YouTube if it was on for everyone, generally speaking. Within the admin console, some individual settings and policies can also be configured using um, access groups. It would be way too long and complicated to list all of them. Essentially, as you are browsing through the admin console, if you see this groups option on the left side, right above organizational units, then that means that particular policy, that section of the admin console can be configured via group. Um, a good example is actually YouTube. Not only can I turn on the YouTube service using groups, if I open up YouTube and go inside of those YouTube policies, I can set um, restrictions based on you know, what type of video students can watch, who can approve videos, things like that. Let's take another uh, example, okay? Let's talk about uh, the need to uh, provision a Chrome extension to a particular group of students. So I'm gonna browse um, again into my devices and then Chrome apps and extensions and then users and browsers. So this is where you would typically, you know, whitelist, blacklist, provision, push your Chrome extensions. I see the Google group section, so I know that this is possible. Okay, so I'm, I've selected my special group, then I'm gonna go ahead and add a new app, search for Equatio, select that application, and now anyone inside of that Equatio group will have the ability to install that particular extension. And I can, you know, typical rules, uh, force install, pin, block, restrict, um, I can apply that. This also works for Android applications as well, um, which is uh, which is great. You know, we had talked about James, <laughs> who changed his profile picture inappropriately, and so I'm going to show you how you can use these group policies to place certain restrictions on uh, settings as well. Now, this setting is located in directory, and then we go into directory settings. And this is where we can configure if you can change your picture, your name, gender, working location, all the, the profile editing, okay? So I'm gonna click on profile editing. And then here are my check boxes. And once again, I see the group's designation. So I'm gonna select, James is naughty, it's my Google group. And then once that is selected, I will deselect whatever options um, I want to allow. Okay, so he will no longer be able to basically edit any aspects of his, uh, his profile. And we're done. So you can use Google Groups to turn on services and provide certain policy restrictions, which is very helpful keeping your users in their respective organizational units, your graduation years or whatnot, which is awesome. Now, if you're not familiar with organizational units or if you don't have a good setting in place, definitely check out this video up here, which will walk you through the importance of OUs and how you should set that up in a K-12 environment. If you're interested in more Google Admin tips like this, I'd also invite you to join me for the Google Admin Bootcamp, my comprehensive training on using the Google Admin Console to manage your users and policy settings.